low fruit bats. It's Freely the Banana Girl here. Today is day four of the 30 videos in 30 days. And today's topic is getting fat on a high carb, on a raw food lifestyle. You look pretty fat. Tanner, so Tanner, do a swell for us. Do a swell. Swell the physique. The bumble, just, just hang, go back to the... The bumblebee has arrived. There's no, there's no cellulite in the back of your legs anymore. No, you know, they, do you remember? There used to be. At they the used start, to be. At the start, there used to be. What sort of treatment did you get? No treatment. Did you buy one of Matt and Angela's... No lipo. Cleanse things or something? <laughs> 500 bucks? No. Give me? Okay. No, I didn't. What about the dog? What's the little mutt doing? Tigsy. <laughs> yeah, so like gaining fruit, I mean gaining fruit, you know, gaining fat on a high carb, high fruit lifestyle. Is it possible? Well, look, firstly we need to determine whether it's actually fat, fluid, muscle, bone weight because a lot of people are like, oh my god, I'm gaining fat. But are you really gaining fat? You know, we need objective measurements. And one that is probably the closest that we can get to accurate, which is still not completely accurate, is a DEXA scan. Yeah, that's probably the best there is, but it's still pretty subjective because yeah. you can drink a gallon of water in a day and he eats the salt and put on like, you know, five, six kilos of water weight in a day, but your body fat percentage will go down, even though your body fat total grams hasn't changed. So it might be able to, yeah. to measure your body fat grams if you did it before and after, but otherwise it's a bit, bit you know. Yeah, we kind of need something. Yeah. Though. Yeah, because it's like, I'm gaining fat, but are you? You know, it's we need some sort of measurement. That's why long term is always the most objective, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Where's the fat fruitarians or like there McDougal isn't. people? There's no long term, high carb, raw vegan, vegan, people who are fatties. Well, there isn't. They're lean beans. So why do people say they've gotten obese on fruit? Do people really say that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. No, no. It's impossible to get obese on fruit. It is absolutely impossible. But, you know, we need to take into account a lot of things. Like, there's so many variables that contribute to people gaining weight. Okay? There's sodium. You know, how much sodium are you consuming or were you once consuming as well? Um... There's also, if you're coming from an eating disorder, if you're coming from an eating disorder like I was, I had anorexia and bulimia, and I actually had low thyroid function. Ah, thyroid. The good old T, thyroid. Yeah. I had a blood test. It was diagnosed with low thyroid. They put me on medication. I was on that for about six months to a year. And guess what? You know, now I don't have any thyroid issues. It's not slowing me down at all. But if... Because I had that problem and I came to this lifestyle, of course I was going to gain a little bit of weight. Mm -hmm. Because I was coming from anorexia and bulimia and, you know, whenever you, ca you like create a calorie deficit, like forcefully, you forcefully take, you know, a thousand calories, fifteen hundred calories away from what your body needs every day, then it's going to catch up. Mm. There's going to be a time where it rebounds and catches up. Mm -hmm. But is that the, f the fat, I mean, sorry, is it the fruit making you fat? No. no. So those people with thyroid issues, which is pretty common, unfortunately, I see a lot in yeah. the cycling community and that, and my, even myself had a few thyroid issues for their while because I was just, you know, used to doing stimulants and drugs, party drugs and yeah. shit like that, and that does have a long-term effect. On your so, metabolism, definitely. Yeah. You know, and, and so like, there's probably no people out there at all who haven't tried a diet. Yeah. Everyone's tried a diet. And most people are on a diet yep. at any time. Like they're on a diet mm -hmm. at some stage. And I think the camera's shaking off. I'm, I'm just shaking. Cold? A little bit. <laughs> oh, he's cool. So everyone's been on a diet or they're on a diet. And then they come to this lifestyle and they start eating normally. Yeah. So their body has been yo-yoing. Yep. They've been in this yo-yo stage. And then all of a sudden they're getting sufficient calories. Mm -hmm. And their body's starting to heal. The body starts to you know, hold on to the nourishment. And the water. Hold on to the water yeah. for healing purposes. Hormonal purposes. Definitely. Beneficial. We need, to, we need to go through that stage yeah. before our body balances out. I mean, I'm living proof. I was you know, over 40 pounds heavier than now. Yeah. Over 40 you, pounds, that's a lot to drop in the toilet, I reckon basically. You, I honestly sincerely believe you would have become obese if you stayed on the paleo diet and all easy, that. Easy, easy. Same with me. But the thing is, you we love food. You can't stay on them, can you? Because it's so low carb that you just start to go crazy and you, you binge out all the time. Yeah. So it's it's not sustainable. No. And this is, what, this, this is a lifestyle. We have to stop treating it like a diet. We have to get alive. Two-week fad <laughs> cleanse. Well, yeah, and we have to get alive. You know, and, and realize that we're more than a number on the scales. You know, yeah. that does not define us. A number on the scales is, or how tight our clothing fits, is not what defines us. Just show us again how tight your, your clothing is, though. 
Sean, show us again. This show us again. That fruit does not make you fat. Carbs do not make you. You fat. can't hide anything from this. Swirl it around, baby. We've got to show the audience. We've got to drum it into them. I feel this is necessary. We've got to, and hey, you got a bit of a gut on there. You got you got some food now, something, have you? I have actually ten bananas in here. Nice. And how many liters of water in there? A couple of liters. A couple of liters. Nice physique. I've got a guts. Physique. You're, you're getting. This guy? You're getting no beast, mate. No more food for you. He's joking, luckily. Michelle mate. bridges so 1,200 calories a day for 12 weeks. What a joke that is. I just, I just want all the ladies out there in particular to know that I, I totally feel for you. I know how freaking frustrating yeah. it is to be stuck in this diet world for years and years and years and then come to this lifestyle and maybe gain a bit of weight and go, oh shit, you know, I'm, I'm gaining weight. Like this isn't working. This is just like other diets. It's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. You have to go through a healing phase before your body balances out. But you will. Yeah. Trust me, you will. I see it all the time. There's no long-term high-carb, raw vegan people. Who uh, I don't know. Happy. Let me just say some names, and you say fat or thin, fat or slim. Yeah. Um, me. Slim. You. Slim. Um, Chris Randall. Slim. He lost 150 pounds. You know, so he might he, he, he might he might not look people. he might not look like a Kenyan marathoner just yet, but in due time. No, he's slim. Um, he looks great. And you dug. Graham. Slim. Christina. Slim. Um, Megan Elizabeth lost a lot of weight. Slim. Um, who else have we got? There's a lot of people. There's a lot. Yeah. yeah they Chris Kendall. Are, they, you, know. On, you know, you don't have to be 100% raw to be slim, okay? You don't have to. Just, you have what, to so you can have a bit of KFC? Carb. You have to be high carb. What are the, vegan, the people we know who's, who still eat a lot of fruit, but they eat a lot of KFC and they're still fat? Well, they're not doing the program, are they? Okay. I think that's another case. I mean, definitely people do, you know, have gained weight, you know, like I did as well. But I was coming, I was yo-yo. I was in yo-yo mode. You were. <laughs> Absolutely. But the reality is, to be objective, after about six months of you being on the program, yeah. in July 2008, when I saw you again, you've been across Australia, you had changed. And then from then on, it just went down. A lot of people have been asking that. Yeah. When exactly did, you know, how long did it exactly take for the weight to come off? So it took me a good couple of years to lose, you know, the majority of the weight. And then it just started going down and down. Did you do any juice fasting or feasting to no, lose the weight? That's another thing. A good friend emailed me. She said, why am I putting on weight? And I'm like, I had a look at a diet. I'm like, oh, you know, you're having too many meals that are just juice for too long. What, and too much sugar? No, 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 like now you're in rebound mode because it's not because it's too much sugar, it's because there's not enough fiber, you're not getting enough calories, you're not getting enough oh, sugar. So green juices. Yeah, a lot of those okay. green juices, well, you know, they can really send you back into... You know, slow like, metabolism. Slow metabolism. Slow, slow it down to a, like a slug crawl. Yeah. Well, Angela Stokes, man, she's put on a lot of weight. I saw one of the video clips recently and sort of Matt Monarch had a bit of a side of a body and she's put on a lot of weight. Quite sad. Well, high fat, raw, superfoods, juice, colostrum, telling you, that dairy, stuff eggs, meat. Eventually leads to weight gain. For sure. It really eventually it will. Yeah. And, so know, go with long term, yeah? Yeah, go with long term. Long term, term drug free results. And someone asked, like, when was the aha moment? You know, that high carb and high calorie vegan was the way. Raw vegan, vegan. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just been a gradual thing. There hasn't been, really been this aha moment. Do you find that too? Yeah. I think we've just been gradually just learning more and playing with our bodies and helping so many people that it's just this gradual process. Yep. Just like my weight has come off gradually. And you want it to be gradual. You don't want it to be... You want a shock in metabolism. Huge, yeah, this huge drop in Shocking weight. it. Because where, where's the positive habits being formed? There's Never. There's positive habits. It's just this... Oh, someone's choking over there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's like trying to steal a Porsche to own a Porsche. Yeah, it's not sustainable. That's right. Like you want it to take time because it's going to build these positive habits that are going to be with you for life. And yeah. the weight's not going to come back. That's right. You know, I, I find it hard to put on weight, I'm telling you now. It's just so easy to stay lean. Good. Another thing as well, when people write, say, oh, put on weight, put on weight. And then you often you check their photos and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, they're already slim. Okay, here we go. So that's probably 95% of the situation. That's right. That's I'd, right. I'd say that's 95%. They're just freaking out about nothing, or they've got really poor posture and their stomach muscles are really weak, so yeah. they eat a banana and they get fat. That's another thing, yeah. I mean, like, I know it can feel like, like coming from anorexia myself, as soon as I started eating enough calories, I, you know, when I was eating big fruit meals, my stomach would, would distend, like mm. it does now. Mm. And mentally, I'd start to think, I'm fat. Oh my God, yeah, I, just, I'm fat. I just gained 10 pounds of fat in a meal. Yeah, oh no, I'm fat. 
So they're ninety five percent of the people you read in the forums. I'm fat. I'm fat. I'm fat. I'm fat. I'm fat. And then you look at their There's photo. Like, okay. Super lean. Issues. Also, and then, the advice: listen to your body. Yeah. Oh, this one's a bit of a hard one, eh? Like, because I mean, it's all very nice to say listen to your body, you know, and you'll eat right and everything, but it's so subjective. Most people, when they listen to their body, especially as newbies, end up binging out on KFC. For sure. Or having some junk food, some chocolate, or whatever, and then you never see them again. Mm. So that's why we need calorie requirements. We need calorie recommendations, like minimums. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not going to be for everybody, but it, we have them. We have observed 2,500 calorie minimum for women, like across the board. They seem to thrive at that minimum, and then they go up from there. Mm -hmm. So that's why we give these recommendations. Eat as much as you want, or yeah, we want you little, to yeah. Your body, of course. But people seem to enjoy being told to eat less. Yeah. Like, what is that? I think people. They almost want to fail, so then they can say, I tried that thing, I tried it, I tried it, and then so, like, so I'm, like, I eat KFC now, yeah. you know. No, but, no, no, you can do this. Okay, so that's my message today. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'm going to see you tomorrow, day five. Got a good video lined up, and don't forget to go. One more swirl, just in case you got fat in the video. Just in case you got fat in the video. <laughs> swirl it around. Don't hurt yourself.